Tron. Hey, everybody. So today, it's kind of interesting. Um, the markets were very mixed today because we did get a Fed statement. Um, we got <clears throat> just some Senate news. They were trying to um, vote today to advance the infrastructure bill. Also, a lot of states made the decision today to um, go back um, to some sort of one of the phases that they had during COVID last year. So it was very mixed. Um, also, let's see what else happened today. Um, Robinhood IPO. Um, <clears throat> so their IPO was valued at about $32 billion, which makes their stock uh, almost 40, I think somewhere between 35 and $40. So I'm gonna pull up my screen so you guys can um, see. <clears throat> I can't share my screen. Um, so for the time being, I'm just going to talk. Um, so the FOC, um, the FOMC statement that came out today from the Fed, the main thing you guys need to know about what came out today is that the Fed um, <clears throat> is still seeking to follow what's going on with COVID, following all the economic challenges. And they still have said and have continued to say that they are committed to a wide range of economic tools, which means in Fed talk that they are going to do any and everything possible <clears throat> to make sure that the economy does not crumble. However, whenever we actually take a look at what the Fed um, said in their statement, some of the things that Jerome Powell has actually said. Um, Jerome Powell has actually said that they're going to start cutting back um, some of the um, stimulus, stimulus that they've given to the economy. So they're gonna start cutting back, not only on the government side, but they're gonna start cutting back on the treasury fiscal side as well. <clears throat> so remember the Zoom call I did when I talked about what happens when the Fed stops stimulating the economy. So I want you guys to think about this. I'm not gonna go into it. You guys can go back and look at the Zoom call, but we have banks that are not lending money. Banks are actually giving money back to the treasury right now because they don't want the risk. They don't want the money. These banks could be flipping that money, making more money, making billions of dollars a day on the money that they've gotten from the Fed, but they're giving it back to the Fed and taking a loss. They don't want the money. Now you have the Fed saying, we're gonna start cutting back stimulus. That was what made the markets freeze today because it's like, wait, you have all the major banks not lending out money anymore. You have all the major banks not doing personal lines of credit anymore. You have all of these big banks giving back money now the Fed is going to stop giving money too. So think about it. In the minds of investors and hedge funds, they're thinking like if you look at a faucet and you slowly start to turn it off when it goes from like full blast to a drip, that's the visualization of where the money is going in the economy right now. It was on full blast, splashing everywhere. Now it's starting to dry up. <clears throat> now also add that to what I just said earlier. You have states that are starting to go back to some sort of phase that they had before. Some states are telling people that they can't be out after a certain time. Some states are saying, now you have to wear masks. Some states and some areas within different states are, are mandating the vaccine. You have healthcare systems mandating the vaccine. Like here in North Carolina, every healthcare system is mandating the vaccine. Um, there are only a certain number of exemptions you get for the COVID vaccine. You can do a religious exemption. You can do a medical exemption, but it's nothing like the flu vaccine. So you have all of these states putting on these restrictions now. You have the airlines 
um, that are having issues right now because there's a shortage of jet fuel <laughs> for airplanes. So think about how all of this is going to start affecting the economy over time. Like all of this stuff is going to pile up and add, um, add up and pile on, on top of one another. We're at, we're, we're almost at the end of the quarter. We're almost at the end of the third quarter. So we really have to be vigilant and really pay attention because going into the fourth quarter, typically that's the biggest quarter for the United States. All of our major spending holidays are in the fourth quarter. Um, when businesses and when our government actually does the budget for the next fiscal year is done in the fourth quarter, it's a lot of things we have to pay attention to in the fourth quarter of the year. It's a big quarter, it's super, super, super important. <clears throat> so um, with that being said, I'm gonna flip over to the Forex Factory calendar and just gonna go back to yesterday really quick, um, just to take a look at the news. So consumer confidence news, I had to actually go in because I was a little shocked that the news was so great. Well, when you go in here, I'm not gonna read it all, but they made changes to how they calculate the consumer confidence. So on paper, it looks better. And I'm not even gonna take the time right now to try to find this report. It's supposed to be on the front page and it's not. Anyway, I'll drop the link for it later. But anyway, so um, they changed how they do consumer confidence. So first of all, they added more recipients to consumer confidence. They changed the criteria for who they actually ask <laughs> these questions to. So before it was really, it was super random, super random for who asked the question, super random for who um, responded and you know all that kind of stuff. But when you look at the demographic of people who they actually ask, um, like the pay scale and the education level kind of shifted up. So they were asking people who tended to be more stable, who tended to have a higher level of education, a higher level of pay, because think about it, if you're asking those people, they're, I'm not gonna say everybody was okay, but they tend to be okay in times of, um, pandemic hardship when things aren't going quite as well and then also they switched up the type of questions that they ask for consumer confidence so now you're asking questions not so much pertaining um, to right now but how are you feeling more about the future like it's more long term so if you're giving people the hope of stimulus giving the people the hope of a fourth stimulus check giving the people the hope of more money giving the people the hope of getting a child tax credit every month. Like you're giving, you're telling people to look into the future <laughs> at what could possibly happen. How confident are you about the, not only the near future, but the distant future? Like, and the way the questions are asked, you're like, okay, like anybody could be hopeful. If you're, if you're an optimistic person, you would have answered yeah, or answered five or four to most of these questions. So um, take a look at this consumer confidence and then go back to one, let's say from like February or January and just compare it, look at who they ask, look at the demographics and you'll see the difference. Um, then you'll see how they can kind of manipulate um, in an indirect way, manipulate the data. Um, and I say in an indirect way because you're not directly influencing the um, person who, asking or who's answering the questions, you're influencing like how they view the question and then also the demographic because they don't really have any control um, over that. But today um, we got CPI news from Canada, it was horrible. Um, <laughs> their news was not that great today. Um, that slightly affected oil markets for a little bit. Um, just because it was Canada's consumer price index news. That's one of their major um, economic indicators. Our oil news was actually okay today um, because one thing that's happening right now with our oil, they um, private companies and these holders of oil, 
right now can't hold on to oil. I just said that airlines are having a problem keeping jet fuel. They have a shortage of jet fuel. So if you try to book a ticket in like the next three to five weeks or so, it's going to be expensive because they are having to cover fuel. I was trying to book a plane ticket, side note, for my friend, plane tickets from here to Paris are normally about $600. I just looked and it's $1,100. So yeah, there's a surcharge for fuel right now, um, a heavy surcharge for fuel. So that um, negative that you see, that usage out of our inventories is because they're having to literally use inventories to help cover transportation. And think about it, these airlines, when you get on a plane, you're not just on a plane with passengers and your luggage, you're on the plane with mail, you're on the plane with heavy cargo that needs to be shipped somewhere. You're not just on the plane with you and your luggage and like, you know, other passengers, like they use regular airlines for other things as well. So, um, you know, mail has to be transported still, heavy items, cargo. So it takes jet fuel for all of that. And then Fed funds rate. So the statement I had it pulled up earlier today or earlier in the Zoom call, I just kind of glazed over that. They did not change the rate. And in the press conference, the big thing to note was that the Fed was going to start cutting back. The Fed was monitoring inflation. And that was the Fed's way of, you know, going about monitoring um, inflation. But one thing I will say is that um, the way the Fed is currently going about trying to control inflation and the way the banks are going about it, also the way that the corporations are going about it, it's, um, it's not cool. So um, I'm still talking about inflation when I say this or when I tell you guys this. So I was watching a segment last night. And then I was also reading about it online. We talk about how in times of inflation, it's like a rubber band and you are using the rubber band to um, simulate how far your dollar can stretch. Well, Right now, if you were to go into the store, let's say you like chips. If you were to go into the store and buy a bag of Doritos, the nine and three quarter ounce bag of Doritos, let's say it was $2, I don't know, $2. Well, now that bag that was 9.75 ounces is now 9.25 ounces. Go in the store, like go in, the, like, go in your kitchen first. Go in your kitchen, just find, find like 10 random items. Then go into the grocery store and find that same item and see what size the package is. It's probably going to be about the same price, if not about 10, 25 cent more, but the package is going to be smaller. So corporations right now are not helping inflation at all. They're actually making the situation more inflationary. Um, Doritos was a culprit. Um, Kellogg's, the cereal company, was a culprit. And there were a couple of other companies that you find like in the package aisle that were making their packages smaller and either charging the same or slightly higher prices. So when the Fed talks about inflation, when you hear these statements and whenever you're looking um, you know, at all of this information, like really think about like, how is this affecting me? How is this affecting my day-to-day -day life? <clears throat> these are ways um, the corporations right now aren't getting the money that they need from the banks because remember, banks aren't just like lending. They're just, um, it's not that they haven't stopped lending to just people. They've stopped lending as much money as well to corporations. So the corporations are struggling slightly to do everything that they have to do. It's easy for us to look at corporations and say, they're making all of this money they have billions of dollars, but the billions of dollars that corporations have, they don't all, they don't have it in cash. They don't keep all that money in cash. That money is kept in treasuries. That money is kept in a side bank account for lawsuits and E&O and like 
you know, all of that kind of stuff. These co corporations, even though we see the billions they make, um, it really, it's not how we perceive money where we can just go to the bank and take it out. Um, so speaking of corporations, speaking of the money they make, because I wasn't off on a huge tangent there, I'm rolling that into the GDP because that matters. So as they, as they make money, as corporations um, put products out and as we buy their products, that goes into our GDP. That is our economic indicator for how much are we growing as an economy. So this quarter over quarter, I don't think is gonna to be too bad because we were coming out of COVID. So we probably did grow, but what I want you guys to make note of is what this quarter's numbers are like and in comparison to next quarter, because Everything I just told you that the Fed is doing with, you know, pulling back stimulus, everything that I've told you that the banks are doing with not lending out money and giving the money back to the Fed, those things shrink the economy. Remember, always remember this. If you don't remember anything else that I tell you, doggone it, remember this, is that our dollar here in the United States is a debt instrument. Debt has to be created in order for us to have the dollar. Anytime we start talking about trying to be in a surplus, trying to cut debt, that means that our economy is not growing. So if you see our GDP number and you've heard that we're trying to cut debt, we're trying to get out of debt. We're trying to stop spending. Just know that that's going to shrink. That's going to be a negative. Okay, now moving on. So <laughs> um, tomorrow we also have unemployment claims. That's going to be super important because people need money to spend, to buy products so that these companies can grow, spend money to pay salaries so people can get a salary, to spend, to buy stuff, that whole big wheel that we've talked about before. Um, that's also important because September is when they're supposed to renew, well, September is the time when all of the benefits that they wrote into any, all these COVID packages and stuff, that's when they're set to expire. So people are trying to get in now to get their benefits because they're gonna be running out soon, like in like, eight weeks, six to eight weeks or so. Pending home sales, important because we've talked about the inflation that has happened in home sales within um, the real estate market. Pending home sales is going to show us just how are young people, how are people actually able to fare in this market? These are going to be month over month. So this is going to be June compared to May. So we're going to be looking at how people are doing in the market, because think about it, pending home sales is going to show you how confident are people just really, how confident are people in our future, in their future, because a home is not just a little bitty purchase. It's something that a lot of people get into for 30 years. Not everybody, you know, you can do 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 but it's a long-term, it's something you have to plan out. It's something you have to be set and secure with. So are people really confident in making a long-term purchase like that? If so, how much are they spending and where? Where are they doing all of these purchases? So um, pending home sales is gonna tell us a lot. We'll talk more about it on Friday. Then also on Friday, we have Canadian GDP numbers. We have um, German GDP numbers. We have our um, consumer expenditure numbers that come out for the United States. We have personal income, personal spending, Chicago PMI. We have consumer sentiment numbers. We have inflation expectations. We have a Fed member speaking. And even though this is not a major Fed member, like it's not Jerome Powell, it's still a Fed member speaking, and you always have to be cognizant and conscious of what these Fed members are saying because it's their opinion 
based on what's going on in their region of the United States. So when they speak, they're speaking on their region. So um, pull up the Fed map um, and actually just look, look to see who the Fed chair or who the Fed um, leader, president, who the Fed president, sorry, is for your region. Um, because when they show up on this Forex factory calendar, they're talking about you. They're talking about your state. They're talking about your economy. They're talking about the things that are going on in your area. Um, there are 12 different Fed regions. And, you know, when Jerome Powell speaks, he's talking about all of them. So Jerome Powell and your Fed member um, matter. So pull that up. Just know who your Fed member is. I also just listen to all the Fed members because I like to know how they feel about their region, but also I like to hear what they're saying to know if they're on the same page with Jerome Powell. It's easy for them to vote with Jerome Powell on paper because it looks good on the Fed statement when you pull it up to see that everybody agreed. But when they get asked questions and when they're speaking, a lot of times they'll say little things that lets you know that they really didn't agree, but they, they had to do it or they felt like it was the right thing to do to just go along with everybody else. So um, that's my little tidbit. That's what I do. That's how I follow the news. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Level so that he can get started with the technicals. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Cool deal. Appreciate that, Carmen. Great stuff, as always. Powerful, powerful information. All right, cool beans. <clears throat> All right, cool beans. So let's look at the dollar. Looking at the dollar, we see that we have gotten a bearish push to the downside down through the structure back down to retest this previous um, market structure over here. <clears throat> um, we see we had price to push back down below the imbalance that we had marked from over here. We've seen price push up and then push back down through it twice. And then we got this pull back right here. Perfect retest of that imbalance and then break back above previous highs and then got this push down and then this push down that we got today. Great indications that, you know, the dollar is going to continue to sell off. Um, and with that being said, let's look at Euro USD from where we was at Monday and where I wanted to see price go. Um, <clears throat> so Monday, we were right here. And I told you guys that um, I did expect to see the dollar to start out the week bull, um, bearish to the downside. And so I wanted to see our currencies push to the upside. <clears throat> we see that we did get this pull back here to retest previous structure. And then we did get that nice pump to the upside and another retest right back down to structure. Um, today and another good pump to the upside they gotta be at least 60 70 pips yeah 60 
some pills, 64. So, um, got the up move out of Euro USD. Hold on, let me let these people in class. Let's look at GBP USD. Look like we got a good up push out of GBP USD too. Told you Monday night that I want, I expected to see price come back and retest this imbalance here. So we can see that um, we got this push here for London. Push up. And then today we got another push up and prices making its way up to that imbalance. So um, that's like <laughs> that's like 120 some pips. So look at NZD USD. Um, she um, pushed to the downside. And more than likely, uh, well, she did give us this push here today, but um, she pushed a little bit <clears throat> lower than what I expected. I didn't expect her to push down that low, probably was because of the news or something. Then we got that push up. So it looks like we're gonna get another little pullback right here, retest this structure and then continue to push up throughout the rest of the week. But we know today is Wednesday and we should be out of market by the day anyway. So looking at silver. Silver push down. I did want to see silver push up off of this structure here, but she continued to push down. Let's see what she want to retest. Hmm. Yeah. Cool, yeah, so. That's good. Those, all right, so she came back down to retest $24. Mm. I think I had that level marked on a previous chart. Um, I don't know. My baby girl being here, she be messing up my chart. But um yeah, um <clears throat> but I I do expect to see silver to continue to be bullish um if the dollar continue to push down. This looks like some good divergence right here. So between silver and the dollar. So definitely want to see um silver continue to push up, feeling this imbalance that we got right here, and maybe this imbalance as well. So this was a good squeeze out before the up move. So we'll pay attention to that um, throughout the rest of the week and going into next week. Looking at gold, gold is making its way up as expected. It didn't give me that swing down like silver did. It did just continue to accumulate here. Now we see it just pushing up. So. Maybe by the end of the week, we see it push on up to here <clears throat> to fill in half of this imbalance we have over here. So keep our eyes on that. We see all slowly making its way back up. We did get above structure. I told you guys that if we did get above structure and held this structure, I did expect to see silver to keep pushing to the upside. So we see we did get above the structure. We hold held the structure. So I do expect to see silver, I mean oil, to keep pushing to the upside. I got so many pairs in my head, y'all. It's crazy. Last but not least, um, U30. Um, I 
I do expect to see you 30 to keep pushing to the downside. I told you guys Monday that I wanted to see it push down. This is the four hour, so let me go down to the um, at least the hour because we did. So yeah, so we just really basically just been accumulating. Um, I think we're gonna see a, a nice push to the downside between here and tomorrow between tonight and um, London markets in the morning. Probably see a good push to the downside. Um, I would like to see that anyway. I think we'll see a good push to the downside. Um, and then I wanna see how price react when we get back to 34,600. Um, Probably will see a good snap back off of this level here that I got marked at 36, 34,600. Probably see a good snap back off of that. And then we'll have to see how price action reacts. Um, if it can get back above this structure. If not, then we'll expect to see U30 continue to push to the downside to come down here and fill in this imbalance down here. So, um, that's what we'll be looking at for you 30 throughout the rest of the week and going into the new trading week. So with that being said, I'll stop the recording, take any questions.